Good day, class. So it's Sir Capistrano again, and welcome back to another lecture for uh, organic chemistry or Chem Twenty One, where today we will be talking about alkyl halides. So basically, when we talk of, when we think of alkyl and halide, uh, meron at makakarno tayo ng konting idea kung ano ba yung pag-usapan natin for today. So by alkyl, we know that alkyl are just aliphatic hydrocarbons or in uh, this are organic compounds having carbon and hydrogen atoms. And by halide, we mean halogen. So meaning to say, we'll be looking into uh, aliphatic compounds bonded or attached to a halide or other way around, we will be talking about halides that are attached to our alkyl compounds. So this, I think this will be a short lecture regarding alkyl halide. And continuing on, uh, by alkyl halides, also known as haloalkanes, uh, uh, these are organic compounds that contain a halogen atom bonded to an sp3 hybridized carbon atom. And by uh, sp3 sp3 hybridized carbon atom we know that uh, these are carbon that have uh, four bonding sites uh, that assumes a tetrahedron uh, orientation wherein uh, for alkyl halide we'll be having this general structure in which we will be having our carbon here and we, we will have either for this uh, portion of the carbon we will either have R groups or uh, hydrogens and at some time we will be having R groups here and in this we will have this halogen we, which we use X as our uh, symbols wherein X is a halogen that can be a fluorine, can be a fluorine, a bromine or an iodine. So for the general formula so we have here the general structure, and for the general formula, we have this formula wherein we have our R group that is bonded to our halogen. So basically, that will be our alkyl halides. So uh, we can also classify our alkyl halides based on their uh, or on the class of carbon atoms to which the halogen is attached. So we already talked about this by the classification of carbons wherein we can have uh, primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary carbon atoms. Wherein uh, for primary carbon, carbon atoms, our carbon atom is actually attached to another carbon atom or in some cases attached to an R group. Wherein an R group can be an aryl group or an alkyl group. And also, uh, if we talk about secondary carbon, we have two R groups there. And uh, for tertiary carbon, we have three R groups. So the same is true for our alkyl halides, where in, in this examples, uh, if we note that this uh, central carbon is our alpha carbon, alpha or simply the, this letter, carbon, uh, we will just be looking into the number of uh, R groups that is attached to our carbon so we can characterize this uh, or classify this alkyl halide. So as you can see here, for this uh, first carbon or this alpha carbon, there is only one attached R group into it, meaning to say this carbon is actually a primary carbon, making this alkyl halide a, pr a primary alkyl halide okay so by primary as you may have remembered we just use one then a degree so that is our primary alkyl halide so as you can see here for our second compound here our second structure we have uh, two R groups that is attached to our alpha carbon meaning to say we have here two that means that is secondary carbon which also means that we have here a secondary alkyl halide okay and for this third example as you can see here we have three r groups that is attached to our alpha carbon 
So meaning to say, this is our tertiary alkyl halide since we have there a tertiary carbon atom. So uh, on uh, in considering alkyl halide, uh, this classification is actually related to the reaction mechanisms. Uh, wherein uh, when we talk about these types of alkyl halide, uh, different tendencies of reactions can happen when you compare uh, primary halides or primary alkyl halides and tertiary alkyl halides, so uh, secondary alkyl halide. So, doon, uh, based dun sa, ano, sa type ng ating alkyl halide, nagbabago-bago yung pwedeng maging uh, probability ng mga chemical reactions natin or reaction mechanisms natin when we talk about this uh, these types of alkyl halides. So in that, uh, like any other lessons that we have, we will be talking about nomenclature of alkyl halides. So for nomenclature of alkyl halides, there is a, actually a simple way of naming uh, alkyl halides wherein we have here the common name in the IUP AC naming of uh, alkyl halides. So for the common name, we actually just use the alkyl group. We will be just looking to at the longest alkyl group or the alkyl group. Uh, and uh, we will be also looking into uh, the anion that form the halide, wherein by an ion form, uh, we have there the fluoride, chloride, bromide, and iodide. So, for example, I, we have here uh, CH3, CH2, Cl, uh, wherein we have there two carbon atoms. That is et, as we have remembered. So, this is actually just ethyl chloride for its uh, common name. And for this one, as you can see here, we have here uh, three carbon atoms. And we have here a metal group that is attached to the slat, to that last carbon, and we have a chlorine that is attached to that uh, to that carbon atom. So as you can see here, if we are to draw the structure, it would look like this. So we have here this uh, structure, and we have here our metal group and our Cl or our chlorine. So, as you can see here, this actually forms a sec butyl, meaning to say, uh, this structure is our sec butyl chloride. Chloride. Okay. So, as for this one, this is actually, uh, this ethyl chloride. Okay. And uh, same for our cyclo cyclic analogs. We will be just uh, adding our cyclo to the name. So as you can see here, we have here a cyclic structure with six carbon atoms. So that is cyclo hexane. And we have here a methyl and a brom bromine. So we can say if we uh, get the na common name of this compound, we will have this. Methyl cyclohexyl bromide. So that is our methyl cyclohexyl bromide. Okay, so it's simple as that. We the system works for any uh, for simple alkyl halides works well for simple. Uh, alkyl halides, but uh, when we are talking about cyclic analogs, as you can see here, uh, we know that we have a methyl and a cyclohexyl and a bromide, but uh, hindi natin actually na state ko anong position. So, kumbaga, kung isipin natin, we, we, when we are using this type of naming for uh, complex alkyl halides, just, just like this methyl cyclohexyl bromide, Medyo magkakaroon tayo ng issues minsan. Kasi, alimbawa, for ethyl chloride, madali ito. As you can see here. Uh, since uh, it is ethyl and it's just chloride, 
ethyl having two carbon atoms kahit saan maka-attach yung chloride, walang problema. And for sec butyl chloride, ayun, uh, you just need to follow the sec orientation or secondary, uh, uh, you just need to attach your carbon or your chlorine to a secondary carbon in the butyl. So, mapa, dito man siya mapa-attach sa side na to or dito, sec butyl pa rin siya. But when it comes to this methyl cyclohexyl bromide, dyan na tayo magkakaroon ng issue minsan. So, pag hindi tayo gumamit ng uh, systematic way of naming. But, uh, because as you can see here, I can simply draw here uh, a cyclohexane. Then, I just need to attach a methyl. It can be there and it can be here. Your ating bromine. So, kung makikita nyo, magkaibang structure na to. So, uh, yung common names, it will help with uh, simple alkyl halides. But uh, for complex uh, alkyl halides, medyo magkakaroon tayo ng problema. So, uh, there, in there, we must use our IUPAC naming. So, uh, for the IUPAC naming of our alkyl halides, we will just uh, follow the same rule that is used for alkanes and cycloalkanes wherein halogens are treated as substituents. So, for example, uh, we have here this, uh, this ethane and this chlorine. So, if we are to follow the same rules for alkanes, Ang gagawin lang natin, we just need to look for the parent chain. And as you can see here, our parent chain will be ethane. So that will be our ending there. We have there our ethane. And we will treat the halogen as substituent. Ibig sabihin, itong chlorine will be a substituent. So that will be chloroethane. As you can see here, class, hindi ko na nilagyan ng number or ng position yung, yung chlorine. Because as you ha may have remembered, we just give the lowest possible position for our substituent. And for ethane, mapa nasa harap man yung chlorine natin or nasa dulo, uh, it will have the first position. Meaning to say, we have here our chloroethane. So for this one, as you can see here, our chlorine is attached to this carbon atom. And since we are, and uh, since we are just getting the the longest chain or the parent chain, as you can see here, we have uh, one, two, three, four carbon atoms. That means if this is a butane, and we will be just treating chlorine as a, as our as a substituent, meaning to say, if we are to draw that butane and that chlorine is attached to this, so this is a substituent. This is our parent chain. Meaning to say, we just need to get our, to give the uh, lowest possible position for our chlorine. Meaning to say, kapag dito nagsimula, 1, 2, 3. And pag dito sa kabilang side, that is 1, 2. Therefore, we will be using 2. So we have there 2 chloro <coughs> butane. Uh, sorry, para dun sa, ano, sa space. Pero dapat walang space yet. So let natin pabalik that Clo. We have here two chlorobutane. Okay? And for the last one, uh, we have here a cyclo uh, alkane. By cyclo alkane, we have here a, a cyclohexane. So, ganun lang ulit. You just need to consider that as your parent chain. Then, uh, you, you give the lowest possible position for the substituents. So as you can see here, we have here two substituents. We have here the bromine, then we have here the methyl. So for this one class, as uh, as we are dealing with uh, alkyl halides, we will give precedence to our bromine or to our bromo. Ibig sabihin, uh, we will be giving the lowest possible position for our uh, bromine rather than our methyl group. That will also apply for any aliphatic hydrocarbon. So if you have a halogen that is attached to your parent chain, 
and you also have some uh, alkyl groups that is attached to your parent chain, you need to consider the, the alkyl first. Okay? So, the halogen, uh, no, not alkyl, you must give the lowest possible position for the uh, halogens. By halogens, we mean fluorine, chlorine, bromine, and iodine. So, for this one, we will give the lowest possible position to bromine, that is 1. So, hindi tayo iikot ng clockwise. Uh, kasi, alam nyo na, pag binigay natin tong 2, ito ay magiging 6. So, we don't want that because we want to give the lowest possible positions for our uh, substituents. Meaning to say, we will be uh, giving this methyl uh, second position. And we, uh, we still need to uh, consider the alphabetical order. So, meaning to say, we will be uh, mentioning bromo first or bromine first, then methyl. So, for this one, we will have one bromo. One bromo dash because we will be writing two dash then methyl cyclo hexane. So, uh, for from the methyl uh, cyclohex cy cyclohexyl bromide, we now have this one bromo two methyl cyclohexane as our IUPAC or this uh, methyl uh, cyclohexyl bromine. Okay, hopefully that's clear. Uh, that is why I told you earlier in the semester that uh, if you manage to master the naming of uh, alkanes, uh, by alkanes, uh, alkanes and cycloalkanes, nagiging madali na yung pagpapangalan ng mga susunod pang uh, organic compounds because uh, similar lang halos yung pattern, hindi nagbabago-bago. Kapag uh, straight chain or meron kang cyclic analog, yun, same process pa rin yung gagawin mo, you just need to get the parent chain or the chain with the highest number of carbon atoms. Then, you just treat everything else as uh, substituents. So, but for uh, parent chains that may have multiple uh, candidates for being the parent chain, kailangan lang natin consider doon ay yung parent chain na pinakamarami yung branches. So, after noon, you just need to give the position numbers for your uh, substituents. Don't forget to separate numbers to numbers but using comma and numbers to words using uh, dashes. So, that is our uh, nomenclature of alkyl halides, specific, uh, also a review regarding the naming of our alkenes, cycloalkenes. Okay? So, uh, just like our uh, discussions, in the past, we will be remiss if we uh, didn't talk about physical properties of uh, alkyl halides. So, for the physical properties of alkyl halides, uh, these are the three properties that we need to uh, remember when we are talking about alkyl halides. So we have a slight, uh, slightly polarity or slight polarity of alkyl halides. This is due to the carbon and hydrogen bonds that is present in our uh, alkyl halides. So by this, due to the differences between the electronegativity of carbon and our uh, alkyl halides, we have a slight shift or a slight uh, polarity wherein uh, we will have a side that is slightly positive and a side that is slightly negative. That is why we have a weak dipole-dipole interaction between uh, each molecules of alkyl halide. Meaning to say, if you have an ethyl chloride and an ethyl chloride uh, due to the presence of the carbon and the halogen bond. Magkakaroon tayo ng dipole, dipole interaction wherein uh, for ethyl, let's say, let's use uh, methyl chloride wherein we have here our CH3X 
and another CH3 X since this side is slightly positive and this side is slightly negative again this side is slightly positive and slightly negative itong side na to we will have this uh, interaction between and that interaction we will have uh, the interaction between our halogen and the other carbon atoms uh, of metal uh, metal halide kung ano mang halide so, and also, uh, molecules are still uh, held together by Van der Waals forces of attraction because, sabi nga kanina, we only have this slight polarity that is not an absolute uh, dipole-dipole interaction. And due to that slight polarity, uh, alkyl halides are, are still insoluble in water, especially those uh, alkyl halides with higher number of carbon atoms. But they are uh, soluble in low polarity solvents like uh, benzene and ether. So, bakit siya insoluble pa rin in water? That is due to the presence of the alkyl part of the alkyl part of of the alkyl halides. Kasi kung iisipin nyo class, uh, slight lang yung polarity na yun nung na yung ating alkyl halide kasi ano lang siya uh, it's more on uh, due to the presence of the electron clouds of uh, our halogens because halogens as you may have remembered when they are bonded to any atom meron siyang tatlong lone pairs dun sa paligid niya and that three lone pairs actually contribute to that slight polarity but that is not enough uh, polarity that it uh, may be soluble in water. Kasi andun pa rin, uh, due to, kahit sabihin mo na mataas yung uh, electron density about the, the halogen, meron ka pa rin kasing R group. And that R group May it be unsaturated o hindi, itong ano ay highly insoluble siya. Insoluble siya sa water. So that's why uh, kahit mataas yung electron cloud natin dito sa ating halogen area or dun sa halogen natin mismo, uh, hindi yun enough para maging soluble yung ating alkyl halides sa water. Okay. So uh, let's talk about more about the interaction between the molecules, each molecules of alkyl halides, wherein, uh, as you may have remembered, we'll be again talking about uh, intermolecular forces of attraction uh, by uh, by examining the forces, by forces, the Van der Waals forces, and the dipole diaper interaction of uh, each molecules to each other. Okay, so let's talk about this uh, molecules. So as you can see here, we have here, metal chloride. Common name talaga yung ginamit ko yan. So, we have here, uh, metal bromide. And, of course, we have here our methyl iodide. Okay. So, uh, as you can see here, uh, in this figure, Makikita nyo actually yung difference ng sizes ng ating uh, ng molecules ng ating halogens. Uh, being uh, met the metal group uh, having the same sizes, as you can see here, chlorine, bromine, and iodine actually have uh, different atom sizes. So, ano yung, ano yung significance niyan? So, makikita natin yung significance niyan actually when we talk about their boiling points. And for metal chloride, uh, metal chloride has a boiling point of negative 24 degrees Celsius. Uh, metal bromide has a boiling point of 4 degrees Celsius. And uh, metal iodide actually have a boiling point of 43 degrees Celsius. So as you can see here, there is actually a trend. Wherein, uh, kung titingnan natin, malaki pala yung magiging epekto ng sizes ng ating uh, ng ating ng ating mga halogens. 
because as you can see here if we actually look on the space feeling uh, model of this as you can see here our uh, chlorine has less uh, surface area or less size mas, mas maliit yung size niya kaysa sa bromine at saka sa iodine so kung mapapansin niyo doon dahil dun sa increasing size or mass or atomic mass of our uh, of our halogens there is actually also a, an increase in the boiling point and as you may have remembered kapag mayroon tayong increase sa boiling point ibig sabihin mataas din yung van der waals natin or pwede ring mataas yung intermolecular forces of attraction natin and therefore mataas din yung ating uh, boiling point so kita lang natin yung trend so, if you have an increasing atomic mass, that also means that you have higher uh, molecular size, which also means that you have higher uh, surface area for uh, contact. And that also means that we will have here a higher uh, Van der Waals forces. Which means we will have higher intermolecular uh, forces of attraction. Okay? So that's why pataas din yung ating uh, boiling point, which is our uh, usual measure for our uh, intermolecular forces of attraction. So, kapag mas, uh, tawag dito, mas malakas uh, yung pull or yung hila ng, uh, molek ng mga molecule ng ating isang organic compound sa isa't isa, mas nagiging mataas din yung uh, kanilang boiling point kasi uh, mas mataas yung kailangang i-reach na temperature bago sila mag-assume mag ng randomness or yung tinatawag natin pagiging gas. Okay? or pagiging liquid. So, that is our uh, our the or the effect that is the effect of different halogen atoms to our uh physical property. Okay? And another uh effect that we need to consider or trend that we need to consider is the effect of number of halogens. That should be number of halogen atoms. Okay, sorry. So, uh, in that, uh, as you may have remembered, our metal chloride actually have a boiling point, which is negative 24 degrees. And we have here our di, uh, our metal dibromide, uh, dichloride, kasi dalawa yung chlorine. So, ayan, makikita nyo. Magkakaroon na tayo ng problema dyan. So, we have there, dichloromethane, imbis yung uh, ating common name yung gagamitin. And we have here, trichloromethane. And for the first one, we, have sim we simply have there, uh, chloromethane. Okay. So, Kung yung ating chloromethane ay, ano, ay negative 24 degrees yung boiling point, as you may expect, pataas yung boiling point sa natin dito. So, we have here 40 degrees Celsius. And for trichloromethane, it ranges from 61 to 62 degrees Celsius yung kanyang boiling point. So again, why? Because, kung titingnan natin ulit, yung kanilang space feeling uh, uh, space feeling model as you can see here glass uh, the amount of, of space that is actually uh, occupied by higher number of halogen atoms actually contribute to the larger size of our uh, alkyl halide and as you may have remembered pag mas malaki yung molecule mas tataas yung ating surface area of contact, which means, pag tumaas yung surface area of contact natin, magkakaroon tayo ng stronger Van der Waals forces of attraction, 
kaya yeah, tomataas yung ating uh, physical property which is for this scenario we have here our boiling point so uh, so that lang natin so higher uh, number of x atoms means higher uh, molecule size This also means that we will have higher uh, surface area of contact. And uh, due to that, we will have stronger uh, Van der Waals forces of attraction. And due to that, we will have higher intermolecular forces of attraction. And due to that, we will have higher boiling point for our scenario. Okay, so that is the effect of number of halogen atoms. And lastly, this is uh, a common uh, common trend that we already talked about in the past uh, videos and past uh, functional groups, the effects of chain length. So we have here uh, methyl bromide, we have here ethyl bromide, and we have here one... Uh, 1 chloro propane. So, again, na natin sa space filling para mas makita natin. So, we have here a uh, chloromethyl methane pala. We have here chloroethane. And we have here 1 chloro So, same uh, scenario or same uh, observation as you can see here. If we just uh, take note of the take note of the sizes, as you can see here, we will have higher chain length. Will mean higher uh, molecule size. which also means higher surface area of contact, which also means uh, higher uh, when there was forces of attraction. And lastly, we will have here, not lastly pala, we will have here higher intermolecular forces of attraction, other, which means we will have here higher boiling point. Okay? And for the data, chloromethane, that uh, that have uh, that has a boiling point of uh, negative 24 degrees Celsius. We have 12.5 degrees Celsius for our chloroethane, and we have 47 degrees Celsius for one chloropropane. Okay, so those are some physical properties of alkanes that uh, we need to talk about. So uh, basically. Para lang din silang alkanes, uh, alkene, at saka alkyne. Almost similar yung kanilang mga properties. In which, uh, same, uh, same scenarios or same physical properties may uh, apply or same physical trends may apply uh, due to its their similarities. Okay? Uh, so, in that, uh, we'll be now moving on to the reactions of So, for the reactions of our, our reaction mechanisms of alkyl halide, uh, meron tayo actually dalawang kailangan consider when we are to talking about alkyl halide. So, by its name itself, we actually have two parts. We have uh, alkyl halides are composed of our alkyl group and our halogen group. So, by halogen group, we actually mean uh, by uh, halogen, uh, halogen being uh, a weak uh, base, meron siyang tendency actually class na maging living group. A living group, aalis siya ron sa ating uh, molecule. So, for example, we have here this structure, wherein uh, we have here 
As you may have remembered, this is our alpha carbon. By alpha carbon, mm -hmm. we have here our alpha carbon. And we have here our uh, halogen. As you may have remembered, we have here a slight polarity between this uh, bond. So, meaning to say we have here a slightly positive side uh, or a partial charge, positive charge here at our carbon and a partial negative charge here in carbon. So, if this is the carbon or the alpha carbon, kapag hindi methyl, yung ating, or hindi metal uh, highlight, yung pinag-uusapan natin, we also have here this beta carbon. Okay? So, we're in that beta carbon may also have here this uh, beta hydrogen. Beta hydrogen. So, ano bang meron sa mga to? So, actually, kung makapansin nyo, nagpangalan lang ako ng ilang parts ng ating uh, ng ating alkyl alkylate. But basically, due to the presence of this beta carbon, the presence of this beta hydrogen, this alpha carbon, and our living group, which is our halide, meron tayong uh, bilang lang yung ating mga reactions na pwedeng mag-exist mag, uh, when we are talking about alkyl halides. So, uh, li our living group being a weak base, nagiging good living group siya, ibig sabihin kahit walang reaction or walang, uh, tawag dito, wala, hindi present yung, walang present na reagents, walang present na kung ano man na pwedeng maka-apekto dun sa ating alkyl halide. Our halogen can, uh, our halogen actually have a tendency na kumiwalay dun sa ating alpha carbon kahit walang reaction ang nangyayari. Therefore, for forming what we call a carbocation. And due to that, uh, merong dalawang bagay na pwedeng mangyari doon wherein uh, we can actually, pag nagkaroon tayo ng positive side dito or free na carbon, na alpha carbon, pwede tayong magtanggal ng hydrogen wherein uh, by magtanggal ng hydrogen, our beta hydrogen may be removed or may be abstracted by bases. As you may have remembered, our hydrogen is positive, our bases is uh, uh, negatively charged. So, pwede siyang matanggal dyan. So, pwede siyang, pwede tayong magkaroon ng elimination or wherein may eliminate natin yung ating hydrogen. Also, due to the, uh, due to the absence of our, or uh, due to the, tendency of our halogen to be uh, a living group. Kung meron kang ibang nucleophiles, as you may have remembered, nucleophiles are uh, molecules or atoms that has a high uh, quantity of electrons na nagsisik ng positive or ng protons. And sa natin pwedeng makita yung protons na yun? Pwedeng mangyari yun? Uh, pwede yung mangyari dito. Ibig sabihin, pwede tayo magkaroon ng tinatawag nating substitution wherein kung pag mayroong kang nucleophile, pwede yung mag-attach dun sa iyong carbon atom, mapapalta niyo yung inyong living group mo. So, if you're paying attention, we will actually have two uh, sets of, uh, of reaction mechanisms that, that can, can happen to our alkyl lines. So, those reactions actually ay kung yung tinanggal natin yung ano yung hydrogen tapos nawala rin yung ating ano yung ating living group or yung ating halogen we may have our elimination reaction also uh, if you are also paying attention if our nucleophile attach itself hindi na abstract yung ating beta hydrogen if our nucleophile attach itself to our uh, alpha carbon, kapag natanggal yung ating, ano, yung halogen, we will actually have there our substitution. To be exact, that will be our uh, nucleophilic substitution. So, in that, we will be having 
those two uh, reaction mechanisms for our alkylic line. So we will have substi uh, nucleophilic substitution and elimination. Okay? So, first things first, let's talk about nucleophilic addition. So, by nucleophilic addition, ito ay iba dun sa mga napag-usapan na natin dati wherein we already talked about uh, electrophilic addition. By electrophilic addition, and then yung sa ano natin, yung last time yung electrophilic aromatic substitution, we also have a different addition, uh, electrophilic addition uh, on our past lectures involving alkanes, alkenes, and uh, alkynes. But for today, for alkyl halides, we will be actually talking about nucleophilic uh, counterpart of electrophiles. By nucleophilic substitution, this just means that our uh, one of the atoms that is attached to our carbon in our organic compound will be substituted by uh, a nucleophile. And by nucleophile, we have different types of nucleophiles that we can uh, talk about. So uh, we have, we can separate those two into two different classes wherein we have our negatively charged uh, nucleophiles and also our neutral nucleophiles that may be attached to our uh, hydrogen. So some examples of these negatively charged nucleophiles may be our hydroxide ion. Okay? Also, we also have our uh, cyano ion and also our uh, RO negative by our own negative, these are our alkoxide ion. By alkoxide ion, there's, these are just alcohol uh, wherein you take out the hydrogen. So for the, uh, for the neutral nucleophiles, these are actually uh, equivalents or uh, what is called this? parang conjugates ng no, ating mga uh, negatively charged uh, nucleophiles. So, uh, this can be our H2O. All this, this can also have our uh, organo cyano or our RCN. And we can also have our ROR or our uh, ROH. Okay? Some other uh, neutral, uh, neutral, neutral uh, nucleophiles may be our, uh, yung ating ether, yung ROR natin. So that is one of the examples of our uh, neutral nucleophiles. Okay. So when we talk about nucleophilic substitution, yun nga, sabi ko sa inyo, it's just substitution. So basically, if you have here your uh, your negatively charged nucleophile and you added that to your uh, alkyl halide, say this example, ang mangyayari lang dyan, we will be just substituting this uh, halide with our nucleophile. Meaning to say, we will have here our original alkyl halide where we have here our R group. Then... The nucleophile will be attached to the alpha carbon. Then we will have this negatively charged uh, charge, uh, halogen. So as you can see here, if this is negatively charged, that just means that completo na yung electrons sa paligid niya. So uh, it may appear as uh, non, uh, non-reactive. Okay. Same with our nucleophile neutral nucleophiles wherein uh, if we have here this neutral nucleophile and we add that to our alkyl halide what happens is we just need to replace your uh, halogen with the nucleophile so we have here this product wherein we have here our nucleophile then our the hydrogen will be added to our negatively charged uh living group or it may not so we have here our negatively charged living group plus our positively charged uh, hydrogen okay 
we're in, as you can see here, by nucleophilic substitution, we have here our nucleophile. Then we have here our uh, substrate. And we have here our products, which are actually uh, substituted nucleophile, uh, substituted alkyl halides. Okay. Uh, by that, actually, class, kung makikita nyo, napaka-bear. We have here a bear uh, reaction or bear uh, products or bear reaction mechanism. Hindi siya sobrang explained. Bakit hindi siya sobrang explained? Kasi, actually, class, we have two mechanisms in the prophylic substitution. Uh, ito yung mga medyo kinakain sa mga student kasi nakakalito nga naman siya in some sense. But basically, we have two types of reaction mechanisms for nucleophilic substitution. So we have here the SN2 mechanism or the substitution uh, nucleophilic bimolecular. Okay, so, so, let's have it. so we have here S for substitution. Uh, N for nucleophilic. And we have uh, two as bimolecular. Okay. <clears throat> and for uh, the SN1, this is actually substitution nucleophilic unimolecular. Okay. So, what is the difference between those two? So, basically, the difference between those two is the uh, type of attack that happens. By the type of attack that happens, what happens here is for the SN2, this is actually a one-step reaction. Wherein the nucleophile uh, attacks the alpha carbon while halogen is still attached to it. And uh, for the SN1, this is actually a two-step reaction. Wherein, first, ang mangyayari, aalis muna yung halogen, then uh, we will have a nucleophilic attack to the alpha carbon. So, kung baga, kung iisipin nyo, parang ganito. Meron kayong dalawang pusa sa bahay. So, ang nangyayari, kung meron yung isang pusa ay nakahiga sa isang maliit na box, na isang pusa lang ang kasya, at gusto rin pumiga ng isang pusa parang sa isang box, Kapag SN2 yan, ang gagawin ng isang pusa, halimbawa, box, andito si pusa A, andito si pusa B. Ang, kung gusto ni pusa B na pumunta rin sa box na nandun pa si, ano, si pusa A, at ang ginawa ni pusa B, pumunta na siya kahit nandun pa si uh, pusa A, yan ay papasok dun sa uh, SN2. Kasi ang mangyayari dyan, magkakaroon ng one-step reaction wherein, dun sa loob ng box, kung hindi sila masyadong friendly sa isa't isa, ang mangyayari, andyan si Pusa B, nasa box, at si Pusa A, ay nasa labas na ng box. So, paano yung sa SN1? So, sa SN1, ang gagawin niya, kung andyan si Pusa B, si Pusa A, nandun sa box, ang mangyayari muna, Si Pusa, bihintayin niyang lumabas muna si Pusa A dun sa box. Nandito si A, nandito si B, nandito yung box, nandito si A, lumabas na si A. Okay? So, saka lang pupunta si B. Ang mangyayari, nandun na si B sa box, tapos nasa labas na si A. So, that is the difference between our uh, SN2 and SN1 uh, substitution or uh, in we talk about their bimolecular and unimolecular uh, uh, substitution. So for the more uh, chemistry-related uh, examples, so for SN2, let's have here an example wherein we have here a tertiary, uh, tertiary carbon, alpha carbon, with a bromine. So, as you can see here, we have here uh, two bromo, uh, two methyl propyl, uh, propane. Okay. So, 
if this is an uh, SN1, this is an SN1 reaction. So, bali ang mangyayari dito, class. First na mangyayari ay marirelease muna si bromine dun sa system natin. Wherein, uh, we will actually form here what we call a carbo cation. And that carbo cation will actually attract other uh, <coughs> other nucleophile towards the alpha carbon. As you can see there, bali kasi anong nangyari class, nakuha ni bromine yung electrons ng ating uh, dun sa carbon-bromine bond. That's why yan yung naging positive. Therefore, we will have here our 2-chloro, uh, 2-methyl propane. So, that is our SN1 uh, SN1 mechanism. So, this is the first step and this is the second step. Okay? So, how about our SN2? So, for the SN2, uh, say we have here this example. I have here a pro... Uh, one bromopropane. Let's say we have here one bromopropane and I added CN. By CN, as you may have remembered, this is a strong nucleophile. And what will happen there is this CN will directly attack that's, uh, that primary carbon atom. Therefore, due to that attack, marirelease yung ating uh, bromine. Wherein, the bond itself, uh, yung electron dun sa bond natin ay magpupunta kay bromine. So, what will happen here is, we will have here our one cyanopropane plus yung bromine. Natin. So, those are two examples or two uh, reactions wherein uh, we have there our uh, our SN1 and SN2 uh, substitu nucleophilic substitution mechanisms. Okay? Actually, uh, that is almost the same with our elimination reaction. But for our elimination reaction, or also called uh, the the hydrohalogenation, wherein the hydro means we will be removing uh, hydrogen and halo, we will be removing halogen. So, after, dito sa elimination reaction class, ang isa sa mga pinaka-importante uh, nandito ay yung ating bases. We, or by some means, we use this uh, symbols B for bases, wherein if we add those bases to our uh, our halogens, wherein our halogen, uh, alkyl halide has this beta carbon and this alpha carbon, what happens is we will have a reaction in which the hydrogen in our uh, in our beta carbon and the uh, Halogen is in our alpha carbon will be removed from the alkyl halide, therefore forming what we call a pi bond between those alpha and car and beta carbon. So therefore forming an alkene. Then we will have here our BH. So the base will actually uh, get the hydrogen, or we are using the new structure. We will have here a base. That's it. That is attached to our hydrogen. And also, let's not forget our giving group. Okay? So that is our elimination reaction. And again, as you may see here, this is just a bare reaction. By bare, basic, kumbaga general uh, structure lang yung nangyayari. Just like our substitution reaction, we, all, we actually have two uh, reaction mechanisms in our uh, elimination reaction wherein we have E2 and uh, oh, hindi ko na palitan. Yan ang hero pag copy paste. <laughs> so, these are actually elimination um, elim elimination reaction or elimination mechanism. Mechanisms in which we have E2 
which is actually just same with our uh, substitution. This is just elimination by molecular. That's Y2. And uh, for E1, we have elimination unimolecular. That's Y1. So just like a uh, substitution uh, or nucleophilic substitution, uh, E2 or elimination by molecular have uh, this one-step reaction wherein the base eliminate the hydrogen while the halogen uh, the hydrogen while the halogen is still attached to the alpha carbon. And all, for E1, this is a two-step two reaction wherein uh, the halogen leaves, then the base eliminates the hydrogen. Same concept dun sa ating PUSA analogy, wherein uh, for E2, uh, nandun pa rin si PUSA A, nung pumasok si PUSA B sa box. And for, uh, tawag dito? For E1, uh, ayan. Dun sa ikalawang scenario naman, na inintay mo nang matanggal yung PUSA A bago pumasok si PUSA B. So, same uh, yung nangyayari. Ang kaibahan lang, ah, yun din. For E1, same with uh, SN1, we will also have here a carbocat ion. And uh, for E2 naman, this will be requiring a strong base, just like our SN2 that requires a strong nucleophile. So, for the examples, say we have here this, unahin natin yung E2. Uh, isa sa mga ano sa mga pwede nating gamitin actually class na strong base are yung ating mga alkoxide ions wherein our alkoxide ions can actually exist as in ion group in a, in an ionic compound form uh, ito let's say we have here our sodium ethoxide ethoxide kasi ethane Merong oxygen, kaya yeah, ethoxide, sodium, sodium ethoxide. And we added that sodium ethoxide to our, uh, let's have this, this. This structure. Yung VR natin, we have here CH3, we have here our H. We have here our H, we have here our CH3, and we have here our CH3. So, <clears throat> uh, being a strong base, ang tendency nito class, ay uh, itong ating ethoxide, which is actually negatively charged, will attack this uh, hydrogen. Okay. So, what happens here is our... Uh, our bond here, or our uh, electrons here, will migrate to the to the bond in between our uh, alpha and beta carbon. So this being an alpha, this being a beta. Ganon yung mangyayari. And due to that, what happens here is we will have a one-step reaction wherein we will be forming this compound. So this is our uh, CH3. Earlier, this one, we have here our CH3, which is this one. And this is our alpha and beta carbon. So we will have here a double bond due to the loss of our Br and our uh, due to the migration of our electrons towards the Br. So we have here this structure. H natin, siyempre. Okay. Then, we have here our, uh, our ethanol plus our NABR or sodium bromide. So that is our uh, E2 reaction involving uh, sodium ethoxide. And our uh, this is 2 bromo 3 methyl. Butane. And for the example of our uh, E1 mechanism, 
One example that we can use is this. Dahil lagi na natin ginagamit to. Bakit hindi natin ito? So we have here our uh, our one metal one pro ay one two dimethyl di ba la uh, one bromo two one two dimethyl cyclohexane. What can actually happen here is if we have Due to the stability of uh, this uh, compound, kapag nagkaroon tayo ng migration ng bond from uh, our bond towards the bromine, magkakaroon tayo ng leaving group wherein we will be forming this uh, carbocation. We have here a positive, we have here a CH3, and we have here our original CH3. What will happen here is if we have a, a weak base, say we have here our hydroxide, that hydroxide may actually attach that positive. Uh, mm, hmm. Ah, yun, alala ko na. Kasi nakalimutan natin yung hydrogen dito. Due to that presence of hydrogen, the bond, uh, the electrons here are actually be, will be attracted to this, the bond of our uh, alpha and beta carbon due to that missing living group. And that OH will actually attack the hydrogen. Kaya nagkaroon ng ano, movement ng bonds. Which means we will have here a compound that have this structure wherein we will have here our original CH3 and our CH3 here. And we will have here a double bond plus yung ating uh, H2O, yung OH na na-attract sa hydrogen, plus yung ating living group which is bromine. So that is an example of our uh, E1. Uh, mechanism wherein this will be your first step. First step ay nagkaroon muna tayo ng carbocat ion and the second step will be the formation of pi bonds between the alpha and the beta carbon. Okay. So basically that is all of the reactions and and all of the discussions regarding uh, alkyl halides. So, just to summarize the reaction mechanisms, we have this from Margaret uh, Wettergreen, wherein she summarizes the, the prerequisites for the SN1, SN2, E1, and E2 reactions. So, we have there the nucleophilic substitutions and uh, elimination reactions, wherein you have there your substrate. So, ano mga pwedeng maging substrate? Mas, umbaga, pag para dito sa SN1, if you have here for the substrate, you have tertiary, greater than secondary, greater, greater than primary. This just means that SN1 reactions can happen to, to uh, tertiary, uh, can happen more in our tertiary carbon atoms and also for benzylic and arylic compounds, meaning to say these are for the aromatics. And uh, for SN2, SN, uh, methyl favors SN2 reactions, meaning to say, uh, by SN2, di, uh, target, di, by molecular, meaning to say, diretso yung substitution ng nucleophile sa methyl. Uh, also, for, uh, it can also happen to primary and secondary, uh, secondary alkyl halides. Also, E1 can as the katulad ng SN2, E1 can happen to tertiary uh, tertiary carbons or tertiary alkyl halides. Also, uh, we have for E2, mas ano, mas nangyayari siya sa mga tertiary alkyl halides. 
Actually, hindi lang sa alkyl halides. This is true for other uh, other living groups. So, as you can see there, sa living groups natin sa baba, we have their uh, good living group, which are weak bases. Okay? Which are included yung iodide natin, bromide, chloride, also water, and our NH3. So, we also have their, uh, for elimination, for better elimination, same. Yun nga lang, kailangan natin ng equivalent acid to form alkene by equivalent acid. So, if you have a weak base, you need a strong acid. So, that kind of uh, synergy. Also, uh, we mentioned din dyan yung stereochemistry. Kung kailan mangyayari yung SN1 and SN2. E1 and uh, E2 reactions. So, as you can see here, we have the general reactions or mechanisms on the bottom. So, as your reference. Okay? So, kung makikita nyo, class, uh, when we talk about uh, nucleophilic uh, substitution and elimination reactions, halos similar sila. Ano? So, meaning to say, uh, when we have alkyl halides and uh, for that same substrate, pwedeng mangyari yung ating nucleophilic substitution and elimination substitution on that same substrate. Meaning, kasi uh, kung isipin nyo, yung nucleophiles kasi ay pwedeng maging base at yung mga bases natin ay pwedeng mag-act as nucleophile. So, what happens here in uh, the reactions of alkyl halides, you need to promote the reaction you need to uh to have meaning to say uh SN2 and S, uh substitution reaction you must have uh conditions that will favor your substitution reaction if you want substitution reaction but if you have you want uh elimination reaction ang kailangan mong gawin ay gumawa ng condition elimination reaction. So, in that, uh, by choosing, by carefully choosing the type of alkyl halide reagent and reaction conditions, magkakaroon ka lang ng isang type ng reaction na if you favor yung reaction na yun over the other reactions. So, in that, I will be uh, ending this discussion regarding alkyl halides. Next week, ah, Next week, uh, we will be talking about another uh, functional group or functional groups actually. Uh, we will be talking the organic derivatives of water or in those or, uh, organic derivatives of water are alcohol, phenols, and ethers. So, and also be ready for an exercise that will be provided during your uh, laboratory class. So, that, have a good one.